everyone. Welcome to episode three of Come to Work With Me, where we get to chat to some amazing people about what they do uh, for work and how they got there and everything to do with Vet Champion. I am joined by Leah Cat today, and we are going to have a fantastic chat about how to get to where you need to be, even though, you know, as we've discussed in the past, there's so many stereotypes around VCAL, VET and VCE and what he does in his day-to-day life. But first, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. I'm on the uh, Tungurung clans, the Kula Nations. I pay my respects to their elders past, present and future. And I also want to pay respects to all the land on which everyone is meeting from today, all Indigenous and Torres Strait Islander friends of Do- who are joining us today. Um, Leah Cat, how are you? Good, thank you. That is very, very good. Now, I have watched a fantastic video that has been posted about you online. You are amazing. Now, tell us a bit about your vet journey. Um, sure. Um, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, so. I'm Liaqal Ahmadi. I um, work as a student attraction officer at Gautaif. Um, So how I started my journey um, was that I did a traineeship um, safety in business with Gautaif. Um, and then after completing, I was offered a full-time job. Um, and now here I am. Amazing. Now, what advice would you give to students who are considering a vocational pathway? Um, so look, um, I would advise something really precise. I would say that um, I respect time, plus um, I can understand that at some point in our life, um, year 11 and year 12, um, we do get um, stuck and not sure what to do. Um, so I would say that um, look out for the opportunities, um, you know, either speak to your Um, teachers, speak to your career advisors, just go out in the community if you have time, volunteer, you know, speak to your local um, um, council and uh, also the people who are doing um, great stuff in their roles. So, um, yeah, I would say just, I guess, be curious and go out and um, learn more. Amazing. So what do you do now? What is your day to day? I'm um, sure. So, um, uh, so essentially, my role is really agile. It's not just sitting at the office. Um, so I work closely with our students and stakeholders, and as uh, and as well as industry partners such as job actors, land locals. Um, you know, um, part of my role is as well um, to provide skills and job services to the community. So, for those who do not know skills and job services, they are um, service. Um, provided across um, Victoria um, uh, and some of the services in, include um, career advisor, um, you know, tips and tricks on repression re- re- writing, sorry. Um, so yeah, um, a day in my life is, is, is really busy usually. So um, yeah. And it would change day to day, every day. You'd be doing something different every day. Absolutely. I love that. You're constantly on the go and learning and developing no matter where you're at. It's amazing. So tell us a bit more about when you were in high school, you were doing VCE and then you decided to change over to VCAL because it was the correct career path for you. Um, How was that thought process when you were like, okay, I need to move now? Did you feel like you had enough support from people? Did you feel a bit taken aback? How, how was that for you? Um, when I moved to Australia, um, I wasn't sure. Um, so the whole education system was really new to me. Um, I didn't know VCE, VCAL, um, but I knew that in, in order to get into university, you need a good ETAR. Uh, and then, um, so I started in VCE like um, only for few, for a few weeks, but then I was told that I'm not able to, uh, that I, sorry, I'm not able to get HEX, uh, HEX support. So that's how I changed um, into vehicle and I just wanted to, you know, do something hands on and, and, and you know, so, um, 
it, it was really challenging for me. I, uh, I always wanted to um, study at a university. Um, but I think, yeah, um, look, there are really challenges and, um, and hurdles that I faced, but I think that um, when I came to know about the VET pathway, um, I, uh, I was really pleased with that, um, that you, you, you know, in order to get to your career where you want to be, you don't have to, um, I guess, uh, go through the university pathway, you can choose the VET pathway. So, um, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. I know definitely there has been a bit of stigma and there's that stereotype behind VCAL for a lot of teenagers that if you do VCAL, you're not that smart or you're going to pick a trade, you're not going to do that sort of thing. There's always that when you're in high school, but doing VCAL, even if you are doing a trade, it's fantastic. You're going to go into a vet course and you're going to get just a similar qualification to what you would at uni. And there... I think at the moment, a lot of students are finding that there's that breakthrough from that stigma. You can do the VCAL, you can do the VET, and it's not it's not a bad thing, it's a fantastic thing. I would absolutely agree with that. And as a matter of fact, I'm not saying that if you go through the university, you will not be employed by the end of that. But if you look at the statistics, most of the um, young people who are in, in employed are the people who went through the red journey pathway. So um, um, look, all the pathways are okay, but it's for people who get stuck at some point that they are not sure. So um, yeah, I think absolutely we need to just remove the stigma around VCAL and that's, I think, changing slowly. Absolutely. And did you know within yourself that you always wanted to work with students and work, um, say, in a tape like you are now and, and to help people? Um, I was always an introvert person, um, but I wanted to challenge myself and I wanted to go out in the community. So um, I basically had set three options for myself, one work in business setting, second community and social, and thirdly trades. But I was really firm on my first option, um, you know. So I absolutely, you know, I had times where I was, um, I went, I spoke to five people in, in a single day to see what they do in their role, you know, just to get the real life experiences um, um, so, um, yeah, look, it was, again, challenging, but again, you, everything you do, you have to go through some stages and, um, and challenges, but uh, at some point, um, I think it will surely happen. Yeah, absolutely. And did you ever think, you know, when you were doing, you know, your course and finishing off, you know, your year 12, did you sit there and think, ever that, okay, this is not going anywhere, this is not going to where I want it to go. Having that self-doubt a little bit about the, the journey that you were on and, you know, oh my goodness, it's so far away, I can't get to the career I want to, I can't reach it. Um, did that ever go through your head at all? Um, look, yes, it did. And especially coming, um, especially being new to Australia um, and the language barrier as well, mm. um, uh, it was, it was hard at some point and I had these constant um, thoughts in, in my mind um, about what am I going to do next after finishing my traineeship um, and how am I going to survive if I get the job. Uh, but thankfully this, uh, the amount of support that I got um, um, from my manager, my colleagues, you know, at, um, at Goto, they were really amazing in, in supporting me. So um, look, up. Uh, Again, I did have thoughts, but uh, the support that I got, um, yeah, after that, I was like, yeah, just on the right path and going constantly um, and learning as well. And, and just keep pushing through it and get to it. I love it. It's a fantastic way of looking at it. Now, if you could go back and tell yourself something when you were you know, in school, when you're a teenager, what would it be? It would be enjoy life. <laughs> um, I look. I was, um, as I've said before, I, uh, I was uh, doing so much to during my school time, um, and I am uh, currently volunteering 
head to organizations. But um, enjoy your life. Um, never stop learning. But if I had to change something back was, again, you know, um, yeah, just, I guess, travel, speak to people. Um, yeah. If you speak to more people, they, you will learn more about, um, you know, life and um, the industries and um, so much more. Fantastic. Now, Kat, thank you so much for joining us and having a chat and letting us into your life a bit. We love hearing so many different stories from so many different people and it's so helpful for students and even for people like me who have been out of school for a little bit who may reconsider studying at a later date. Thank you so much. Now, we are going to have a look at a video uh, that you starred in. I guess you could say you were the you were the Hollywood movie star in this video. So we will look at that and of course everyone remember to join us again. I believe it's just after the school holidays for the next episode. Episode four will be of course when we come back for term three. Hi, my name is Liaqad Ahmadi and I am one of the student attraction officer here at Goto based at our Wallen campus. Back home, I was not able to get education, but now I had this huge opportunity. I was really curious. I, I wanted to learn about the pathways, so I spoke with my career advisor in school, and also I was um, in the community doing volunteer work, and I guess learning at the same time. I was told that I'm not able to get hacks. That didn't stop me. I choose that pathway and I am really pleased with that and that has led me to where I am now in my role which I love. One of the really rewarding benefits of my role is uh, that I get to um, speak with the students and the community and understand them, you know, what their career plans are. The important part is that you should not stop uh, learning and you should and nothing should stop you, I think, yeah. One of the hurdles I faced through my um, bad journey uh, was the language and as well as the business language. And if you're good at communication skills, you can pretty much fly. <laughs>